Um, in this video, I would like to reflect upon the most intense mystical experience I had up until now. And in my videos, I often talk about my, my God experience of August 2018, which I know, I now know was the birth of what Hegel calls reason, but that was more of an intellectual understanding. It was it was shocking, but it was not mystical in the sense of of supernatural. It was more of an intellectual grasping. But the most supernatural experience that I had was in probably February or March 2018. And at that time my mindset, because I just want to make clear that mystical experiences occur when you grasp something cognitively it's just not it doesn't fall from from above or from whatever you have to understand reality and when you do uh, you come into contact with with the divine and my state of mind at this time was I just had discovered uh, novalis uh, and uh, the meaning of poetry by Heidegger and Hegel and I had just completed my from an abstract point of view my intellectual journey and I had stumbled upon the world absolute I had gone through all the phases of what I called the phenomenology of the European spirit namely all the figures of consciousness that Europeans adopt in their process of coming to understand who they are and the nature of, of of the current world and their position in it. So I had gone through paganism, right-wing conservatism, uh, libertarianism, national socialism, um, uh, uh, the black pill, um, and religion and stuff like that. So um, I, it was February or March, and I was watching a video by a young, a young, she was probably 16 years old, right-wing girl, and she was talking about Andrew Jackson, and from an empirical standpoint, I don't know many things about Andrew Jackson, except that he, um, he was an American president, of course, but he, I think he was in conflict with the banking system, but I don't know much about him other than that, but, <clears throat> um, and she was talking about Andrew Jackson and another man, a German chancellor, and, and she said that maybe we should re-examine our judgment about these men because, yeah. And something supernatural occurred in a sense that I had the feeling that she was talking directly to me. And, and I wrote a comments in which um, I... I quoted Slavoj Zizek, um, the, the communist philosopher that I had always admired. Um, and there's a video where he talks about the French Revolution, virtue and terror. And I was in a right-wing mindset at the time. And I said to myself, well, Slavoj Zizek, I, I admire him. But what he says about... Uh, the French Revolution and, the, and, and an idea of a communist revolution. If you took his his uh, his speech and you replace some words by a right wing version of the same uh, meaning, for instance, if you re replace what Zizek says about the French Revolution by what uh, a national socialist revolutionary would say about a National Socialist Revolution, people would find this is horrifying. And for when, when the left uh, claims that violence is justified by noble purpose, no one complains. But if the right said so, everyone would find this to be horrifying. And i just take a few examples. He said, um, talking about the French Revolution, pe do people realize that the whole of Europe declared war on France um, but do people realize that during the Second World War, the whole of the, the whole of the world declared war on Germany? So imagine just replacing 
uh, what leftists think about Robespierre with what right-wingers think about you-know-who. Um, and then he say that uh, people want a product without paying the harsh price. Uh, and people would like to, to meet Christ without paying the harsh price of, of being nailed on the cross. From an abstract point of view, I understand that if you want to acquire Christ consciousness, you have to be nailed on the cross. It's a logical necessity. That's dialectical. So from an abstract point of view, I understand. Uh, yeah, uh, he says also that revolutionaries were always deeply suspicious about the final result and that the struggle goes on forever because the movement of all reality is dialectical and dialectical is a everlasting self-negating process and uh, yeah the, the best you can do is to to become conscious of the dialectical process of change and this is eternity within change um, and he also says that um, um, a revolutionary should accept that he himself will perish in the process that revolution will swallow him completely and I was just thinking that uh, the right wing is, is often depicted as being selfish because they reject universality, they, they are closed upon themselves, they are just uh, defending their own particular interest, which is true. And it is the, the Hegelian definition of evil. But um, what if, that's what I thought when I had this mystical experience in 2018, what if the right wing was fighting for absolute uh, beauty or what I call divine Aryan consciousness. Uh, imagine that instead of Robespierre talking about equality or, or liberty or, or justice, you had a national socialist thinker saying the same thing, but to say, we want divine Aryan consciousness, uh, uh, supreme beauty. Uh, I, I, I thought about it as the fifth element, this this um, sublime principle underlying um, in mysterious ways the universe. So I had this in mind when when I I had this mystical experience. I had another thing in mind. Uh, the scene in the Dark Knight where where the Joker says to Batman. What would I do without you? You complete me. So I, I, I had understood that Batman and the Joker and Harvey Dent were all parts or moment of a, of a process uh, whose meaning was Gotham, that the true hero of, 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 of the Dark Knight is Gotham, and Gotham has three aspects. There's the Joker, there's Batman, and there's Harvey Dent. And they are all in a dialectical relationship with one another. And I understood that. And finally, um, I, I did uh, what, I, what I had done with Zizek's speech with uh, uh, replacing the words by right-wing content. I had done the same about Hegel and Marx. And I, I had taken a passage from Marx's critique of Hegel's philosophy of right. And um, I replaced the words religion and man by the words atheism and God. So I took a mirror image of Karl Marx's speech. And here's what I, I thought. The criticism of atheism disillusions God so that he will think, act, and fashion his reality like a god who has discarded his illusions and regained his senses so that he will move around himself as his own true son. Atheism is only the illusory son which revolves around God as long as he does not revolve around himself. So, this explains... I did not understood completely, but this explains that atheism is a moment in, in the process of development and, and coming to consciousness of God himself, and that I knew that Karl Marx was the, the negation, the dialectical negation of Hegel, 
And what I had just understood at this moment without fully grasping it, but in the broad outline is that Hegel would, would come back <laughs> to dialectically negate Karl Marx, and that would be the true Hegel. So I know that whatever I say sounds completely insane, but what I want to, to summar summarize is that when I had this divine, um, mystical, crazy experience, it actually meant that I had just grasped uh, essential determinations about the nature of God, and I had collided onto itself by uniting opposites in a dialectical fashion. Karl Marx and Hegel, um, Zizek and, and, and leftist revolutionary uh, f discourse and, and, and ideas and enthusiasm with right-wing uh, revolutionary enthusiasm. Batman, the Joker, and the whole Gotham story. And finally, I had thought about the end of Fight Club with the music, Where Is My Mind? And the hero at the end of the movie says, you've met me uh, at a very strange moment in my life. So I had just met God at a very strange moment in the process of God's development because the mystics in most traditions say that the, the, the mystic, when he understands or, or comes into union with God, he becomes God's knowing so that God knows himself and, and become conscious of himself through the mediation of the mystic's insights. Uh, so when, when you have a mystical insight, you do not only see God, but God sees you and sees himself through you. That's very important. So, um, yeah, and the song is Where Is My Mind? Because when you have a truly mystical experience, you lose your empirical mind. And this is what people call, call ecstasy, is to be yourself, out of yourself, by, by losing your empirical self and connecting to a higher self. So, um... Yeah, um, it's just that now, many years later, I I come to realize um, I come to realize um, what happened to me back then. And there's just one thing more: is that after that, I was in a state of complete transcendence, and I was I was dizzy, and I was blurred, and I was in a, in a weird state. But I stumbled upon I don't know how. Um, a quote from um, Metal Gear Solid, the video game, and it, it made complete, completely no sense. There was just that it was written, it's all logical. And the way I understand is that it was Hegelian logic and the world is a labyrinth, is a maze, a, a, a labyrinthian conceptual puzzle. And the way to to remain sane within this crazy world is to follow Ariadne's thread, which is a logical thread, which is Hegel's logic. So, um, in the core of complete irrationality, there is still a rational thread, and this is Hegel's logic. So, um, I needed to share that with anyone and with myself because I am coming into understanding of this this experience now with more um, reflection about it, so yeah.